week's subject this morning is the persuasive speaker, how to communicate clearly. And we are joined by Ita Olson, who is the founder of Convey Clearly, which is um, a company that she set up to really help people communicate, speak clearly. She's a professional vocal coach, um, and she is truly the expert in this field. And I met Ita probably two years ago. Um, and started receiving her newsletters and quickly realized um, that this was a subject, communication was a subject that we can be taught and we should be taught. And it was such an aha moment for me, like, oh my goodness, we're not just born with this. So um, Anita's gonna and really jump into that in a big way. And I'm gonna stop screen sharing. Welcome you, um, just go over some of the house rules. Please stay muted when you're um, in the webinar. Um, we're gonna be recording, so if you don't wanna be seen, then switch off your video. Um, Ito is gonna um, work with us on practicing speaking into our cell phones and recording that and playing it back. So if you do have your cell phone handy um, and can kind of join in with that, then great, but put it on airplane mode so that you're not distracted. Um, and we'll have chat. Um, you can, well, you can enter Q&A in the chat and Anita will answer them at the end. Um, and we deep in, smile, and away we go. Anita. Thank you so much, Nikki. I really appreciate it. And I have so much gratitude for everyone for showing up today. Um, I really appreciate it. I know that uh, you probably were like, well, this sounds really great, but I have absolutely no idea what we're going to do. Because as Nikki mentioned, what? You can learn communication skills? <laughs> I can't believe it. And to put persuasion and communication together? What? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Everyone seems to think that persuasion is something that used car salesmen do some kind of slimy techniques or something but being persuasive is all about being an amazing communicator being a warm authoritative credible funny open communicator <laughs> so i really appreciate you guys having the faith and the hope um, that something will come up today and i do hope you really enjoy it and that you learn a lot Okay. Hmm. Have you ever um, had an idea super, super crystallized in your brain? You're like, I got this. I know this. You've like said it in your head a million times. And then when it came out of your mouth, <laughs> it just wasn't the same. You know, it was like maybe you stammered a little or you used too many words. And it just, what? Where did that come from? Did you ever have a situation where um, maybe someone was confrontational to you? Maybe they were maybe a little bit aggressive and you didn't really have a good response. Maybe you didn't say anything at all. And like a week later, you're like, oh, God, I know what I could have said. I mean, that way I had access. Why didn't I have access to that during that moment? It was in my brain. Why didn't I say it? Did you ever feel like you, um, did you ever go up to a presentation, maybe giving a talk and you draw a blank and you were pretty prepared. You knew what you were going to say. And then it just, that's what that little circle is with nothing in it. <laughs> that's the blank. Did you ever come down from a presentation, sit down and then be like, did I develop amnesia? <laughs> I have no idea what I said while I was up there for that six, eight, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Did you ever feel like sometimes you talk too fast? Maybe you use too many words. Maybe you use too many kind of weak words. I just wanted to tell you that, um, you know, did you ever feel like your maybe voice gets a little pitchy sometimes? And all of these things, they usually happen towards, uh, in, in very high stakes type situations. And you guys are, I imagine, since you're here in this webinar, 
go-getters. You're trying to succeed in life. And so you're finding yourself in, um, I guess that's some, some uh, I don't know if it's questions. I think I'm seeing some comments showing up. Nikki, is everything cool? Yes, everything is cool. Keep going. We'll hit the chat at the end. Everybody's okay, cool. enjoying it. <laughs> so these things happen in high stakes situations and you guys are really trying to get somewhere. You're not sitting in a room doing the same thing over and over again. You're putting yourselves out there and what comes at you? Difficult communicative situations. And the question is, why am I not an incredible, crystal clear, <laughs> very convincing communicator in all of these challenging aspects of my life? Why is this? Is it a mystery? <laughs> We're going to solve a lot of mysteries today. <laughs> is it a mystery? Why is it that sometimes I don't have access to what's in my brain? You know, why is it that I'm not developing these incredible relationships with people, prospective clients, my, my landlord, um, you know, all of these people that are in my life, why is it that I'm not communicating in a way that's really beautiful um, and strong and authoritative and credible? And how can I um, fight sometimes this lack of confidence? And I say to myself, where did it go? I just had it five minutes ago. Is it on my head with my glasses that I can't find? <laughs> where is my confidence? And why is it that I am not a crystal clear and really persuasive communicator in all of these high level communicative situations? I'm here to tell you, we're going to dissolve the mystery today together, okay? The first reason why you're not the most incredible communicator automatically <laughs> is evolution, okay? So our bodies go into fight or flight a lot. And for millions of years, we've used fight or flight as a human species to succeed, uh, to thrive. This is how we've gotten where we are today. And it's only been a very short blip in our history that we haven't needed fight or flight on a very regular basis, that it wasn't something that we absolutely needed. And now what happens when we are in these high stakes type situations, we, um, our bodies go into fight or flight. And what happens with fight or flight is two things. Well, more than two things, but we'll talk about two. Your primitive brain shuts down your prefrontal cortex and gives you two choices. That's it. Unfortunately, <laughs> We can't run. Pew, I'm out of here. <laughs> we don't want to. We want to succeed. And we can't fisticuffs. We may want to do that, but we can't do that either. And so you'll hear people say, you freeze. We freeze. What happens during, and oh, the other thing is your throat closes up. I don't know if you've ever heard, um, you've heard of feeling for clamped or feeling choked up. And that's physically, you literally cannot get the words out. So there's a disconnect between getting the words out and having access to your prefrontal cortex. And the really insidious thing in uh, today's day is that uh, it causes our bodies to become really tense. We get a tremendous amount of tension in our, in our upper bodies, especially because that's where we spend the least time being supported physically. Um, so we get a lot of tension in our uh, vocal mechanism, really. So that's reason number one why we're not automatically incredible communicators. Two, why are we not automatically convincing crystal glare communicators? It's our education. Our educational system doesn't teach children to communicate. We teach science and math and history and geography, etc., <laughs> And we do not address communication skills hardly at all. We teach show and tell in kindergarten and we end show and tell in kindergarten. And I'm of the belief that we should continue show and tell all the way through 12th grade. Of course, it becomes more and more complex, but we just don't have the time in school. You have 30 kids and one teacher. And so writing is really the way that children present their ideas. Uh, yeah, we don't teach how to make small talk, this is important, how to kind of uh, deal with someone coming at you, confrontation, maybe how to introduce yourself and other people. <laughs> 
how to deal with um, someone who's angry at you. There's so many things that we should learn when we're children and we don't. And the thing is about school is not only do they not teach you to be a great communicator and I'm speaking generally here, maybe some people have gone to schools where communication skills were addressed, um, but probably rather minorly considering it's the first thing on almost every job description. <laughs> and we are like, what is communication skills? Most people don't even kind of get it and we didn't learn it in school. But then <laughs> this is my experience and a lot of my clients experience not only do we not teach children to be amazing communicators, but we scared the crap out of them <laughs> when we gave them assignments, a few. In the beginning of the, of the semester, the teacher says, you have a presentation due on November 30th. And on Friday, I just want your title. And that's it. You go home. You figure it out. And I know I was petrified. <laughs> I was in fourth grade. I had a science presentation. I mean, it probably was a minute or two long. I, had it, I did it on the heart. I'm perfectly sure that my parents made the heart for me. <laughs> and I got, I memorized it, probably two or three lines. I, I don't know. My first line was, the heart is a... I couldn't remember. I could not remember what the heart was. <laughs> and my teacher had to give me like clues. He was like, I was like, it's a muscle. <laughs> it's a muscle. And that happened again. It happened again a few times in high school, but I really didn't have that many experiences. And then in college, I took public speaking and that story I'll say for later, but um, <laughs> it's embarrassing. You can be pretty sure of that. So yeah, we don't teach communication skills anywhere in our lives. And that's why everything I'm going to teach to you today is going to be a mystery. <laughs> so I really hope I'm able to explain it in a way that you guys understand. I have a third reason why we are automatically uh, incredible communicators, and that is we're not automatically incredible anything. <laughs> but for some reason, we are really hard on ourselves when we're not um, communicating our message in a way that we wanted to. So we sit back and we go, oh God, I'm so mad at myself. We avoid listening to ourselves on a recording device. I'm not gonna speak for everybody, but because we go like, ah, I sound terrible. I mean, I'll get into this, but you're, you hear your voice through bone conduction and everyone else hears their voice through air conduction. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but when you hear your voice, you're just like, that can't be me. That's not me. I sound totally different. I have labeled this societal insanity <laughs> that we somehow believe that we should be incredible communicators. Let me tell you something. Communication is the hardest thing that the human body does. It's the hardest thing that we do. It is it's so much involved in communicating with people. There's neurological things that have to be done. There's physical, there's breathing, there's conceptual. You have to figure out your concepts and then add in em, sort of emotional or stress. We have so much going on in our lives. There's more than just this interaction that's going on. But even in that interaction, you might be reading it wrong. Like, what's your face saying? Do you not like me? Or do you not believe me? There's so much involved. So it is no mystery. I, here's the thing. The next most challenging thing that the human body does is opposable thumbs, okay? So this is really hard. So firstly, don't beat yourself up. I have been doing this for 24 years, I've been working with people to improve their communication skills. And there's a lot of similarities um, between everybody. One of them is they think they're like alone. <laughs> they're the only ones. And I have to say that they are the absolute majority by far. If you are so determined to succeed, and I applaud you for that, that you say, hey, I'm gonna work on my communication skills, bam you're going to succeed. Okay. That's one similarity that everyone has. The other one is they beat themselves up because for some reason it's a mystery. If you have a, a proficiency for athletics or, or tennis, 
say, you're going to get tennis lessons and you're going to get tennis lessons until you win the US Open. Your coach is going to be sitting there with you because what happens is the coach says, oh, you know, you didn't follow through. And you say, oh, I didn't follow through. You don't go, oh, God, I didn't follow through. I'm the worst. No, you say, I didn't do this and I'm going to fix it. So it's no mystery, please understand that communication skills are really, really challenging and that there is a process. Just like there's a process for every single thing. You want to be a brain surgeon, maybe you have a really, uh, you're talented with the knife, but you have to go through the process of learning how to do this. And unfortunately, we haven't been um, provided with that in our society. So when Nikki first asked me to do this, like she said, she was kind of like, hey, there's some really good stuff here. And can you do kind of like your top tips? And I was like, okay, that's awesome. I'm gonna do my top tips. But I'm a trainer. I train people to sound amazing. I'm not like a tips. Oh, here you go. These are your tips. I'm gonna actually train you today. I'm gonna give you tips that you need. Um, and you can also find them in my blog. There's tons of amazing stuff. How many of you um, checked out the blog? Okay, Nikki, take note, give them extra credit. Okay, anyone who went to the blog in advance. <sighs> so what we're gonna do today is we're going to do some physiological stuff. So you guys are gonna get involved with me. I'm gonna teach you the stuff I teach my clients. All right, and the first thing you absolutely need to do to be an incredible communicator is to eliminate the tension that's hanging out in your vocal mechanism. I kind of count from here to here as your vocal mechanism. Obviously, all these things are connected. So the first thing we're gonna do is eliminate that tension, okay? The next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you to find your true voice. What? Another mystery. Are you saying that the voice that I'm using may not be my true voice? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am saying that. I'm saying that most people are working with voices that are hindered by the physiological tension that's there because of fight or flight. So I'm going to teach you how to open up your throat. Let me tell you a story. I'm from New York originally, and I had an office in New York. And um, I saw people, lots of people, and occasionally maybe twice a year or something, someone would come in, a woman, and she would sit down across from me. I do like a consultation. I find out what are your needs, what are your situations, and what are the hindrances, and then we figure out how to fix them. And they, these women will say, I don't know why everybody thinks I'm so mean. And I know that's an extreme, that's an extreme tense voice. But the fact is that the way that your voice comes out is how people perceive you. It may not represent who you are as a person. Um, it may not represent how credible you are. And it may not represent when you're being funny. Okay. So we need people to uh, understand who we are. And if we have all of this tension hindering our message in, in any way, even if it's a little bit like, I'm going to talk like this a little bit or, you know, and it's like, you're not really getting who I am. How beneficial is it when you um, can really be open with people and really be warm with people? Because that's what it comes down to. There's no used cars salesman -y stuff here, okay? This is about really opening up and being able to let people see who you are and being your real Okay, you have to be your real. This sort of how to just be yourself. You know, when people say, how to be yourself? Oh, just be yourself. Oh, I'm really nervous. I have to do this thing and just be yourself. And you're like, okay, <laughs> I don't have access to myself <laughs> when I'm there. I have access to myself when I'm with my close friends. Um, so we're going to also do how to formulate your message, kind of how to choose your words, how to organize it. We're going to do slow down, <laughs> but it's not going to be the way that you think. We'll talk a little bit about up speak. We'll do a bunch of stuff that's not even on here. We're going to draw a link between how to be a persuasive speaker and the things that you need and what does it really come down to, but, you know, having great relationships with people and being able to initiate and maintain 
um, incredible relationships with people. And that's it being, you know, kind of coming across as crystal clear and persuasive leads to your sounding credible, authoritative, uh, being in your wheelhouse. Like people just trust you. Okay. Um, so that's it. You're going to be there and you're going to be someone that people really respect. So let's talk about getting rid of tension. It's the first thing that we have to do. Tension is your enemy. We must banish it. It is the thing that's stopping you from being an incredible communicator and being in your relaxed place. That's what I call it. Be in your relaxed place is the absolute foundation for every single thing that you need to do. Not just being a great communicator. I mean, um, if you are a musician or if you play sports, you need to be really relaxed. Like we know this. So once we're able, you know, when your body's closed, when your body is tight, you do not have access to the genius that is up here, okay? But once we eliminate the tension, then you start to come across as knowledgeable as you are, and you'll exude authority and warmth, okay? Now, just before we do that, let's talk a little bit about posture. Now, I wonder if any of you, I can't see you, but I wonder if any of you kind of were like, oh, okay, wait a minute, posture. And not as your mom <laughs> told you what posture was. You want to think about posture. Your arms need to stay in the middle of your body, okay? Your shoulders need to be down. Um, one of my big things is your butt <laughs> and your lower back need to be against the back of the chair whenever you're seated. A meeting, a dinner on the webcam, which happens more and more. I'd recommend using a pillow. I have one right now. It's a whale shark. And he also provides me with emotional support as well as physical. Huh. Your feet, well, I should say what the experts say is 90, 90, 90. And it's 90 degrees at your hips, your knees, and your ankles. Okay, that's how you should be seated. I personally cannot reach the floor with my whole feet because I'm five foot two, but um, <laughs> I should put something under it. Um, and um, so you want to make sure, oh, here, another one, very important. This is midline, kind of right between the middle, um, right the, down the middle of your body. What I want to make sure is that you don't cross midline, okay? Crossing midline crossing your arms. Don't cross your arms. Okay. If you cross your arms, don't shoot the messenger. The experts say that means you're defensive. Okay. If you cross your arms, you're defensive. I don't want you to cross your legs either. Don't cross your legs. Don't cross your ankles. Your body needs to be open. The more open your body is, the more control you have over yourself, what comes out of your mouth and other people. And I hope that you use this for good and not for nefarious purposes. Thank you. Okay. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to teach you what I teach my clients, a modified version in the best interest of our time together. Obviously, I'm going to teach you um, a modified version of finding your relaxed place. So we're going to do some relaxation exercises. My clients find this to be life-changing. This is the thing that changed their lives. Um, I just spoke with one person prior to this webinar, um, Jeanette, and she said, I want uh, to have access to everything as if it's in my hip pocket. I want to have hip pocket strategies that that's your, I quote you, Jeanette, hip pocket strategies <laughs> to, you know, have access. When I'm in a negotiation situation and I want things to escalate, I want things to get better, I need a strategy. And your strategy really is to make sure that you're completely relaxed. Because what happens in those types of negotiations, I mean, there's a few more, but basic is, real foundation is making sure that you're completely relaxed. Because when you're in... Um, negotiations or in any kind of thing, you're trying to sell a client or you're with an irate client, you um, will not have access to these things that are in your brain already. This is what you do. This is your wheelhouse. But if you are not in your relaxed place, then um, you won't have access to it at all. 
So these are really incredible. Uh, I do a little more than this with my clients, but we're going to do something. Called, are you guys ready? Is everybody ready? Okay, cool. To do some relaxation exercises with me. The first thing we're going to do is something I call the four points. It's a modified version of, um, of the head rolls. So the first thing we do is, of course, make sure your butt's against the back of the chair, your butt and lower back are supported. And the first thing I want you to do, oh, by the way, I failed to mention, everything I teach you is super easy. It's only a matter of being diligent about it. It's only a matter of practicing, okay? So you're going to drop your chin down to your chest and feel a really good stretch all the way down your back. Really just drop your chin so that your chin is actually touching your chest if you can. Never go to the point of pain, okay, please? Just, just feel a stretch. Just try to stretch out uh, those muscles because that's where that tension is residing and you need to evict it. Thank you because it's not paying rent. Leave your head hang there just for a moment. Really feel that stretch all the way down your back. And then I'll ask you to lift your head back up toward normal position. That was point number one. And we're gonna do point number two. Point number two is right ear, hovers over your right shoulder. And you're gonna feel a really great stretch down the left-hand side of your neck, okay? You can take your right hand, and you can push on those muscles on the left-hand side of your neck, and you're gonna get rid of the tension that's there, okay? Push down on those muscles and really feel the stretch all the way from your ear, you know, down your neck, down your shoulder, and pull your arm down so you have a lot of space. Okay, that's point two. And then back to normal position. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do point three, which is just go back to 45 degrees. Don't go to 90. You can hurt yourself. Just 45 degrees. All right. And then let your jaw fall open. Okay, and what you'll feel is like really, hopefully you'll feel a really comfortable feeling in your brow right here. So your jaw falls open. Ha. I make crazy noises. You do not have to. Ha. And then you feel your brow feel nice and relaxed, okay? And then back to normal position and we'll do point four, which is obviously the opposite of point two. You drop your left ear over your left shoulder and you're essentially stretching out that right hand shoulder because this is where we keep so much tension, it's knots, okay? And you wanna take your left hand and push down those muscles. We have so much tension in our bodies that it's another mystery. Did you ever like this happened to you or to a friend or something? And I was like, ah, I just pulled a muscle in my back. And it's like, what were you doing? I don't know. I just turned around. I just, uh, I just got out of the car. I didn't do anything. <laughs> and I pulled a muscle somewhere in my neck or back or something. And it's like, oh my God, another mystery to solve. <laughs> because all of those muscles, you're existing with tension that you're not aware of. So you can still just kind of push that tension out, get rid of the tension that's in your musculature, and then it's back to normal position, okay? So tension resides in your body. We don't even know it. So what I have to do is teach you to become aware of it, and I'll do that in just a moment. Um, what I want you to do is bring your head back to normal position, and we'll go back down to point number one, okay? And just drop your chin down to your chest so you feel a really great stretch again all the way down your back. And then what I want you to do is some shoulder rolls. Okay, I want you to roll your shoulders forward in circles, okay? And then I want you to roll your shoulders back in circles. This is with your head hanging down. I think I'll just stop share really quick. And um, so, hi. I just wanted to come back and say hi to you guys. So this is kind of a, a litmus test. Like if you can just roll your shoulders around and you're feeling creaks and clicks and all kinds of things, you want to make sure that those are gone before and during every communicative situation. You actually want to be so relaxed that you could fall asleep. You want to be, what? That's another mystery. I have to be relaxed? You mean I'm not supposed to be like, oh, okay, I'm ready. What's up? What's next? What are we going to do? Mm-hmm. Yep. You're supposed to be relaxed in every communicative situation before and during. You know, can you imagine Tiger Woods or, um, you know, anybody who's at the top of their game kind of being like, all right, let me see, I'm going to do this. No, our bodies have to come from 
um, everything we do has to come from a really relaxed place. So what I'm going to teach you next is tensing and releasing exercises. Okay, these are a magic trick for training you to be in your relaxed place habitually. You want to be relaxed uh, as, a, as a learned behavior. You want to always be relaxed. You can't just do like a warm up or, you know, go get a massage because that's great. You know, go ahead and do get a massage and go to yoga and whatnot. But uh, those things last, you know, they sort of peter out with time, right? And then you're in this meeting, you'd be like, okay. <laughs> Um, oh, wait, this is getting crazy. I'm going to step away and like do my warm up or my thing. Like that doesn't work, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you um, how to be relaxed as a habit. And what we'll do is we'll uh, take a breath in and tense up a particular group of muscles. Okay. At the very same moment. And then I'll ask you to let go of the tension and the air at the same time. Okay. So the first group of muscles, right? So you get this, you're going to take a breath in, you're going to do this with me together. I don't get a lot of time to explain everything, but, um, but we'll, uh, we'll just do it and see how it goes, okay? So I'm going to ask you to take a breath in and tense up a particular group of muscles. You're going to hold on to it. You're going to hold on to the air and hold on to the tension. And then I'm going to say, let it go. And you're going to let go of the tension with the exhale there. The first group of muscles that we're going to do is facial tension. I will look cuckoo crazy and first, and then you guys um, are not on camera. So, so I'm going to take a breath in and I'm going to scrunch up all these muscles. <sighs> and then I'm going to let it go. So what that does, aside from getting my makeup all over the place, is um, train me to pair breathing with relaxing. So that if I do this enough, I'll have a conditioned relaxation response. And when I say enough, I'm literally talking about 30 40 times. Okay. This is what I'm going to do. We're going to have a, a five day challenge at the end, and that's going to be part of it. You're going to have to do these um, each day. Not have to. I hope you want to. Okay. So let's do it together. Are you guys ready? I'm going to ask you to take a breath in and scrunch up every single muscle you can find in your face. Hold on to all the tension, locate it because it's there and you don't know it. And now let it go. Let go of all the tension with the exhale air and focus on the absence of tension and the relaxation in those muscles. The first bit, maybe the first 10 times you do it, you're really learning how to find the tension that's in your body. Um, you're going to find it all, you know, throughout here. Um, and then eventually you'll start to be able to find that tension. You'll start to be able to eliminate it. Okay. Um, with my clients, I would do these a couple times and I want you to do them a few times in a row, but in the best interest of our time together, we're going to jump to mouth tension, never to the point of pain, but just clench your jaw together. Okay. Mm -mm. Oh, I feel some tension here. That's what you're going to do. You're going to push your tongue hard on your palate and you're going to push your lips together. We're going to do this exactly at the same moment that you take a breath in. Okay. So take a breath in and clench your jaw together. Push your tongue hard on your palate, push your lips together, hold on to that tension inside of your mouth and now let it go. Let go of the tension with the exhale there and focus on the absence of tension and the relaxation in those muscles. Breathe in and out. In other words, don't forget to breathe. We're going to do the next group of muscles. This one's a little vaguer for people. They don't quite get it at first. So it's going to take a minute. We don't really think about our throats. We can feel our face. Like we know that's there. <laughs> we know our mouth is there, but we don't really think about our throat a lot. And this is where you keep a lot of tension. And that's, I think, why... Um, it's so vague because I don't really think about it. So let's just begin to swallow, actually. I kind of swallow and you feel like your tongue, this is your teeth, this is your tongue. Your tongue goes back like this when you swallow and then it comes back into your mouth. Oh, oh I'm swallowing now. Okay, what I want you to do is begin to swallow and then leave your tongue back there. So, cause that's what we're looking for. We're looking to create tension and hold on to it and hold on to the air. You're gonna feel like you can't breathe, but I don't want you to breathe. Anyway, so let's give this a try, throat tension. Take a breath in and bring your tongue way to the back of your throat. Just try to swallow and hold on to that tension that's inside of your throat. Really focus on it. And now let it go. Let go of the tension with the exhaled air and focus on the absence of tension and the relaxation in those muscles. Breathe in and out, nice and relaxed. In other words, don't forget to breathe. 
and you're going to want to do that a few times, but we're going to jump now to shoulder tension. I focus on the vocal mechanism, but you can take this all the way down to your toes. And some of my clients say it, they do it before bed. It really helps them sleep, but we're just going to do from here to here. So now I'm going to ask you to do shoulder tension here. You're just going to bring your shoulders up to your ears. Okay. Let's try it together. Take a breath in and bring your shoulders up to your ears at the very same moment. Hold on to that tension that's inside of your shoulders. Really focus on it. You can do it with your eyes closed so you can focus from the inside on all of that tension. And now let it go. Let go of the tension with the exhaled air and focus on the absence of tension and the relaxation in those muscles. Breathe in and out, nice and relaxed. In other words, don't forget to breathe. Okay. I want you guys to do this and um, practice it, all right? I'll have it listed on our, on our last slide. We'll talk about what, what I want you guys to do for homework. <laughs> um, we're gonna move on. Those are your relaxation exercises. It's really important that you do them. And if you get them done 30 times, you will not believe just how much more relaxed you can be in your life and how much more access you have to the genius that's in there. All right. It is a bizarre, persuasive, uh, pervasive misconception that the way to improve your speech is to work on your diction. I mean, it is out there everywhere. People are saying, um, I need to try to pronounce each letter to make sure that I am a good communicator. And that is a really serious problem because not only can you say to me, oh, okay, Ada, that makes perfect sense. I'm not really supposed to talk like that. But unfortunately, it's kind of ingrained in your brain. So you'll find yourself in these high stakes situations. Um, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I'm doing it again. Why? So we're going to have to like unlearn that, um, that kind of concept that diction is what makes me a better communicator. And I see these people, like I'm always looking out there like, oh, how to be a better speaker, you know? And I'll see them, please don't go there or find my blog instead. Um, but they'll say like, oh, here's how you, uh, how, how you sound better. You have to say, but I want to know, you know, I don't know, I'm making this up, but this is gonna make you sound like a robot uh, it's going to make it so people have a hard time processing your in information because we don't speak like that. I even want to tell you that this is the reason why um, people who speak English as a second language, this is why they have an accent. This is it. The reason why they have an accent is because uh, they think that they have to pr try to pronounce each letter and they say, oh, it's, I think that I need to go. And they go, oh God, Americans don't stick their tongue out to say that sound. They go to a class and it says, uh, the teacher goes like, um, what time is the next train? Not how, not how it's said. It's, what time's the next train? We don't say T twice, you know? We don't say what time, we say what time. I say the T only one time. What time's the next train? That's how we communicate in a way that's crystal clear. When you do it the other way, you have people who are having a hard time processing your information. This is the other thing that's really important to understand is if you want people to, to do what you say, to follow your call to action, you have to make sure that they're processing your message to a fairly well with no energy um, spent. You know, it's got to come to them easily and then whoop, call to action, followed, okay? It's really, really important. So what is speech? <laughs> Speech, as is all sound, is air molecules vibrating. I mean, sound can travel through solids and can travel through water. And that's why you hear your voice in your head. And it sounds like kind of full and resonant. Like, I sound really good in my head. And now with the ear plug, you know, we're using the earphones and stuff. Now you sound even fuller and more resonant. But when you hear yourself on the recorder, maybe it's a little bit higher, um, not as resonant. Um, because speech as air molecules vibrating, okay? I mean, you really have to go to yourself, wow, I, I thought this was gonna be really complex, this, this class with Ida Olson, but I, I assure you, everything that you really need to do is so simple. So um, take this and do this with your children at home, you know? Um, don't let them think, oh, I have to try to pronounce everything and let them understand. 
Um, speech is air molecules vibrating. So the more air that you use, like let's do me here. I'm, um, I'm not using a lot of air and I'm just talking and, you know, I think, oh, I'm supposed to talk in my throat. Another pervasive misconception. Your throat is where you do your talking. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you use air for speech. And what you have to do is, well, let me do this with you. Everybody take a big breath, a huge breath. Take a big breath in right now and then exhale. What part of your body moved? Let's do it again. Take a big breath in. What part of your body moved? Was it your shoulders? If it's your shoulders, you're using vertical breathing, shallow breathing. There's lots of different words for it. Um, and what happens is when you move your shoulders like this, it stimulates your vagus nerve, which then initiates fight or flight. So that's why I say we're almost always in a little bit of fight or flight because we're using a um, shallow breathing, vertical breathing. And the fight or flight that was there yesterday when you were maybe doing something challenging didn't leave your body. It's staying in there. And so we have to eliminate it. So in order to use air for speech, we have to use abdominal breathing. Has everybody heard of abdominal breathing? Okay, yeah. Um, we have to use abdominal breathing. And what does that mean? It's super easy. It just means that your stomach goes out when you breathe in and when you breathe out. Stomach goes out when you breathe in and when you breathe out. And every, I mean, I've been doing this for 24 years. I've had tens of thousands of clients and most of them nope. report to me that they, um, that they didn't know. They thought it was the opposite. Okay. They thought oh, your stomach goes in when you breathe in. It's the opposite. Your stomach goes out when you breathe in and when you breathe out. So let's do a little exercise together, okay? Because I'm going to teach you how to do this. First, uh, breathe, but don't think about breathing. And then just uh, stick your stomach out, stomach in, stomach out, stomach in. Just moving your abdominal muscles, okay? Just moving your abdominals. Stomach goes out, stomach in, stomach out, stomach in. It's like you're at the gym, okay? <laughs> and then what I want you to do is stick your stomach out and then breathe in. Kind of use your stomach as a little vacuum. It pulls the air all the way in and then exhale. So it's stomach out, breathe in, pull it all the way down to your stomach and then exhale. Okay, stomach out, fill it up with air and exhale. All right, that is abdominal breathing. You know what I want you to do? This is where I want you to take your phone and turn on your recorder. Open up your, your camera or your voice recorder if you happen to know where it is and you don't have to video yourself you can video the ceiling and i want you to um, record yourself okay so i'll give you a second just to get your camera ready so i can have a little more of my beverage mm -hmm. it's chamomile tea it's so good <laughs> um okay so here's what i want you to do the same exact thing we were just doing and that is stomach out Fill it up with air and exhale. Stomach out, fill it up with air and exhale. And then I want you to do on the exhale, because that's where we speak. We speak on the exhale. Your voice takes a ride on the air. That's what we have to do. Be in your relaxed place. Use abdominal breathing. And then let your voice take a ride on the air. Okay? So I just want you to say the word hi. So we're all going to say hi. So it's stomach out, fill it up with air. Stomach out a little... Oh. I'm not teaching you that. It's too complicated. There's some more complicated stuff that I do with my clients, but um, we're going to do the very basics, all right? So it's stomach out, fill it up with air, and on the air's way out, try hi. I want to go crazy. I want you to go crazy, okay? You really have to feel crazy because when your voice is sounding the way it's meant to sound, your true voice, it's going to feel so weird. You're going to think, oh my God, that sounds crazy. But then you're going to play it back and like, hmm, wow, that sounds amazing. Let's try it um, a couple more times, okay? So, oh, did you listen to it? I want you to listen to it. Let's try it again, though. Hit the red button, stomach out, fill it up with air, and... Hi. Okay. Okay. Is everyone doing it? Excellent. Okay. Let's try it one more time. Stomach out. <laughs> 
fill it up with air. And exhale. Hi, crazy lazy. And then play it back and see how you sound. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's up the ante a little bit, shall we? We're going to do, how are you? <laughs> Same exact thing. You're going to hit the record button, your stomach out, fill it up with air, and on the air's way out, how are you? Give everyone a second to do it, and then I want you to listen to it. How are you? Was there a lot of air? Not everyone finds their true voice. I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. You can't find your true voice today, but you can start to find it. I'm going to assign this to you for your five-day challenge to practice this. And you're going to see improvement every single time you do it. But you'll start to hear more air and you'll start to have that disconnect that's, oh my God, this sounds so crazy as I record it. Hi, how are you? Sound crazy. But then all of a sudden you're going to listen to it. And you're like, wow, that actually sounds really, really good. Um, sounds kind of better than what I sound like without doing it. Okay, and so the next step is to do something called breath groups, what I call breath groups, and you can think of it as chunking. When people um, learn things, when they process things, when they memorize things, our brains process in chunks. And so in order to be that crystal clear person that people don't have to work hard to understand, you have to present your information in breath groups or in chunks. And I'll give you kind of an example. Here's a guy and he's at a job interview and they say, why should we hire you? And he says, I believe you should hire me because I am, um, I've been doing this for my entire career and I'm really good at it and I am very determined and I play well with a team and I, you get it, right? Those are not chunks. <laughs> That's the opposite of breath groups. And what the guy wants to say is, you should hire me because I'm awesome at what I do. I'm determined to learn whenever something challenging is put in front of me. I work amazingly with teams. I really believe in this firm. I wanna be a part of it. What if I just did that? What if I just stopped and took a breath in and then I used air again? Then not only did I have the opportunity to take a breath in so I could use it for my next breath group, I had the opportunity to think about, tweak, my next utterance, what was going to come out of my mouth. And I also, mystery, gave you the opportunity to come to the present with me. So while I'm thinking about what I'm going to say next, and you're still processing what I've just said, this allows us to be together in the present, okay? So that's what I mean when I say use breath grips. And we're going to do some, some practice for that, okay? Um, but there's a second part here and it's no ands, ifs, or buts. And what this guy did at this job interview just now was he glued all of his breath groups together. And what I want you to do is I want you to start eliminating your ands, ifs, and buts. Okay. Guys, this is a lot. I know. Okay. I know this is a lot. I'm throwing it at you, but Nikki says it's going to be available on her website for a limited time only. <laughs> so I want you to go back and watch this a few times because there's a lot here and it's hard to get it all. And you're going to hear things the second time you watch it that you didn't hear the first time. Okay. What is intonation? Has anybody ever heard of intonation? I'm sure that you have. Yes. Okay. So intonation is just like music. You want to think about notes. You don't have to study music to know, but I think you might remember from first grade, there's, there's a whole note. Say that's just one beat. A whole note is one beat. A half a note is a half a beat. Uh, you're going to get this now. A quarter note is a quarter beat. We have an eighth note. So there are some sounds that are much faster than others and some that are longer than others. And so speech is truly music because some, um, some, uh, words are more important than others. And we're going to count them as whole notes. And some words are less important than others. Don't give your listener as much information as the other ones do. And so we're going to mm, mm, 
It's like the down with ands, ifs or buts. You're going to um, reduce them. And how do we reduce them? More really challenging stuff. This is so hard. You're going to make them shorter in duration and quieter in volume. That's all you have to do. You have to make them big or you have to make them small. It's that simple. This is a lot of information, but none of it is brain surgery. <laughs> but it's, you're going to have to continue to put it into practice to make it work. Okay. So here's another shocker. You know, well, I'll tell you the shocker first. 90% of your syllables should be reduced. Only about 10% of your syllables are really important and people need to hear. And so, um, you know, we, Nikki was so kind as to send out an email to some of the folks and say, hey, what are some of the difficult communicative situations you've um, encountered or what you're really concerned about? And um, so I try to incorporate that into, so some of you are gonna have um, your stuff up here. Hopefully it'll really pertain to you. One of the things that everybody said, or not everybody, but people were saying that they're having a hard time with their landlord. And I don't know exactly what their situation was, but I made this one up. We're still on intonation though. I put intonation, it's so funny. People always say intonation, because there's an O there. Oh, did I fail to mention English is spelled wrong? <laughs> mm -hmm. It is, it's spelled wrong. And that's why it's really important that we understand intonation because we don't look at the letters and try to pronounce them. And that's that whole thing about having an accent when you speak English as a second language. But People do the same thing. We try to say, I have to have a meeting at four o'clock. I'm like, so who is that talking? You don't say that when you're talking to your friends or when you're feeling really comfortable. So I want everyone to look at this first sentence and say to yourself, what two or maybe three words are most important in this say first sentence here? Um, what words are definitely not important? The pronoun, first person I is not important. I need to get out of my knees. Not, uh, that's not um, helpful in terms for the meaning. I, to, of, my, a bunch of words that are grammar glue. I call them grammar glue, they're necessary. You have to say them, but you have to spend much less time on them, okay? Um, so if you said out and lease, woo, extra credit for you, very good important words. Um, maybe get would be tertiary. You know, that would be like a quarter note or, I mean, you know, just a little closer to the whole note. I need to get out of my lease. I need to get out of my lease. Okay. Because of the lockdown, I can't see clients here. I love this office and I'll be back when the government opens us up again. Okay. This is my demonstration for how to use intonation. It's a shocker I know, but we have to understand the value of the words that we're using and the parts of those words. Okay, so the words that we're using, if they have a great deal of value, their whole note, you have to make them longer and louder and all the rest have to be small. The hardest thing for my clients, this is what I was going to say before and then I didn't say, the hardest thing for my clients isn't making the some of the ones, the 10%, maybe 12%, bigger. That's not hard. Just about everyone can do that. The hardest part is making the ones that aren't important smaller. So that's where we're going to need the practice. I don't know if you guys want to try this. Turn on your record button and say, I need to get out of my lease. And if this is something that you need, or I need to reduce my rent. Whatever it is that you need, you want to look at it. You want to say it in a recorder and figure out, oh, how could I say this better? Let me cross out some of the stuff that isn't important for my listener to hear. Okay. Oh, and there was another thing, and I just threw this on this intonation slide. Um, someone asked, what's the best way to go off script? Um, oh, and she also asked about TED Talkers, and it's just so funny. Um, I don't know why we think like TED Talkers, like, oh my gosh, that's like their first speech or something. Um, it's not. It's not. They, they practiced in the church basement at first, and then they started going to, you know, 
you know, firms maybe and speaking to people. And then after, you know, some time they got paid a little bit. Uh, but the best way to go off script is to know your message backwards and forwards. And I'm going to talk more about that um, in the next couple of slides. The best, what's the best way to go off script is not to have a script. We don't want a script. What we want to do is know what our core messages are going to be. So you can even try that. The best way to go off script, see how I wrote it. I would have written it even more un illegibly, <laughs> but I had to make it so you guys understood a little bit of what I'm saying. So at the bottom of that screen is the best way to go off script. As I decided maybe best and script or most, and then way is sort of secondary and then the rest, let's get rid of them. Okay, is to know your message backwards and forwards. All I did was choose the things that are most important and it makes it easy for people to process. And if it's not easy for them to process, then they're not gonna follow your call to action to such a great degree as you need and want them to. Okay, what is this? This is, let me come back to you guys. Okay, this is something I want you to do. If you can grab oh, some crayons, red, orange, yellow, green. And I want you to think about your life. So this is the whole thing why communication skills are missing from our lives. Because people don't understand that we have communicative situations in our lives. And we have to understand where they fit in our, um, in our, where we, our hierarchy. What's most important to us? So if you look at um, a, the barista, I'm going to put the barista on the bottom here for most people. That's where getting a coffee is, right? There's no stakes you're gonna get your coffee. You, you don't have um, a lack of knowledge of the outcome, okay? If you have a lack of knowledge of the outcome plus a significant desire for an outcome, you're up at the top. That's crucial. Where you don't know the outcome, it can be any number of things, and in your imagination, it can be crazy, crazy things. <laughs> like, you know, this terrible thing's gonna happen. Oh my God, I don't know what's gonna happen. You do not know the outcome and you have a significant desire for a particular outcome, okay? That's at the top. The bottom is the opposite, right? I mean, honestly, maybe there's maybe there's a 99.999% chance you're going to get that coffee because maybe you look in your wallet and, you, you know, you look in your bag and you don't have your wallet. It's like, oh, I didn't get that. Not only, okay, fine, I didn't get my coffee this morning or I didn't get it here. I'm going to go back and get my wallet. There's no great desire. It's not the end of the world if you don't get it. So that's what you want to think about. Um, in when you plot your chart, I want you to plot your charts and think about what are the, uh, what are the communicative situations in my life? And you're going to go through the next few days. You're not going to know what they all are right now, but who do I speak to on a regular basis? Who do I speak to once a week? What's the general um, thing? Do, do I, am I trying to get clients? Uh, what do I say when I'm trying to get clients? What do I say when um, someone is unhappy with the service? What do I say when I'm involved in a difficult conversation? What are the different things that I say? You want to think if we had taught this in school, this would be like in your brain. It's so easy for you to figure out, but we didn't. Okay. But so we're going to start now. You're starting now at being an incredible communicator and understanding the process to getting there. Okay. So what you want to do is think about what are low moderate stakes. Maybe it's with a client you feel super comfortable with, you know, you can't be like, you know, <laughs> as crazy as you might be with your bestie, but you can, you're just, it's great. So you want to think about that and you want to work there. Okay. I also talk about your core messages. So those are two little bits of lingo that um, I want you to become really familiar with. Um, what are your core messages? Your core messages are the thing that you can go off script with because you know them really, really well. I mean, if this is your wheelhouse, I want you to record yourself speaking your core message. I want it to sound terrible the first time you do it. I want you to put on your lab coat and say, oh, I didn't do this right. Oh, that's not so bad. This is terrible. <laughs> I didn't do this right. You have to be a scientist. It's just like you would be if you were taking lessons anywhere. If you're working on piano, if you're working on anything, you are going to measure your your accuracy for where you are, and then you're going to give your plot little goals for your future. Okay, I'm going to learn how to use more air for speech. Okay, so I'm going to have to 
go right through this because I didn't realize what time it was. I was supposed to have that timer thing on. Let's try this. Put on your um, record button and let's try these. These are at the bottom, the green. All right. Let's try this together. Put on the record button, stomach out, fill it up with air and air and let the air, let your voice take a ride on the air. I'd like a medium coffee, no room for milk. And then play it back. All right, let's try it again. Stomach out, fill it up with air. I'd like a medium coffee, no room for milk. However you like it. We'll try the next one and you'll listen to it later. Let's try the next one, record, stomach out. Can we have a chamomile tea? Stomach out again. And a green smoothie. Okay, those are breath groups. All right, I'm gonna jump because um, I wanna talk about a couple of other things. Let's talk about elevator pitch. Your elevator pitch is really important. You can plot that on your chart too. Um, it needs to be in the green. Like you need to make it so it's in the green. You need to practice it that much. So I'm gonna try to use all the skills here. Hi, my name is Ida Olson and I am the founder and CEO of Convey. I turn people into crystal clear and convincing communicators. Mm, not so much, right? Not so much. Hi, I'm Ida Olson. I'm the founder and CEO of Convey. I turn people into crystal clear and convincing communicators. Warmth, am I right? When it comes to your elevator pitch, make sure that you take the perspective of your listener and everybody knows what an elevator pitch is, right? So when you meet someone for the first time and you um, say something for 15, maybe 30 seconds if you have it, 15, and that makes them so curious to learn more about you. And that's really what it comes down to. Okay, someone got back to me about she's a caterer and, or she got back to Nikki, I should say. I didn't get a lot of information. She said she has to pivot because she's a caterer. We know why. Um, and I don't know what she was doing, but I'm assuming she's now offering packaged meals. And what you want to say is, I don't know. I mean, this is, I don't have a lot of information. If I had more information, we could do it more, but I'm now offering packaged meals for families. You don't have to cook and you can provide your family with delicious and nutritious meals. We even have gluten and dairy-free options. So what you'll do is you'll write it down, okay? You'll put your breath groups in. I put them in as slashes, and then you'll misspell the words, okay? I was a spelling bee champion in grammar school, okay? So, but I did this on purpose, delicious and nutritious, because we don't say I provide delicious and nutritious meals for people. It's and we, we rarely say I. The word isn't really I. It's, so if I said I am, it's I'm now offering packaged meals for families. Um, there's another um, lovely woman who's a business owner. She owns a um, housekeeping business and she needs more referrals because obviously we could do it in this in a number of ways, but what if we said, I really love working for you. Are you happy with my services? Is there anything you'd like done differently? Oh, that's so great to hear. I'd appreciate any referrals you could give me. You could just use that last one, um, but it's always nice to underscore that they are happy with you because once you get them to say that, then they um, can't really go back and say, oh, I, I, I don't want to refer you. So they're going to refer you. I'd appreciate any referrals you could give me and anyone can use that. There's a woman who works with brides. I didn't, it was just a quick sentence. I don't know, but I assume that you're a wedding planner. Um, I don't know. And then you have that flower guy who's so mean and nasty, but that I got. But I think that what you're doing is you're trying to sell brides and you want to say, hey, I'm the best one for you. You're going to work with me. So what you can say is, I'm super excited for the opportunity to talk about your wedding day. Tell me everything you've ever dreamed of while I take notes, of course. And then after she's done, you say, I can do that. You know, and you can kind of draw pictures for her in her mind of what it is that she's gonna get, the same pictures that she just drew for you. I'll give you the best wedding ever. Okay. Um, so someone else asked, she has to give a presentation or something on, on uh, the webcam. This is a big deal these days. You can go on my blog, you'll find, um, the, I think it's the last article I wrote. It's about how to really rock your virtual meetings. It's very important. Um, but this is what I put in the article from my article, how to rock your virtual meetings. Get a selfie lighter too. 
make sure you're lit up. Make sure your webcam's at eye level. You don't want to have the webcam <laughs> looking up at you. Um, and you can use a few books to raise it up. Um, another thing, when you're on the webcam, pull the person's pic just below the camera so that you guys are over here for me, but um, so I'm not following my own rules. Put the person's pic just below the camera so you can look at them with love. Okay, I'm just going to move on here. We have this general idea how to be persuasive. There is a strong connection between how you communicate and how persuasive you are. Your communication skills are what make you seem credible, authoritative, and in your wheelhouse. You want everybody to just get the sense that you're in your wheelhouse, okay? So we're going to go over what being persuasive is right here. Using your tone of voice, opening up your throat and using a voice that's really open. You know, down with and zips or buts. We talked just briefly about body language and how you have to make sure that you're really open when you communicate with people. Um, you want to use fewer words. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to record yourself trying out a couple of your core messages and you're going to absolutely know that it's not going to sound the way you want it to sound, but you're going to work on this and that is rewrite it revise it, make it more concise and make it more active. So choose your wording that just is active sentences and don't use undermining words, you know, like a just, and I, you know, I only just, um, facial expressions are really important. Um, your face should be completely relaxed and you're going to do that with your tensing and releasing exercises. You want to get rid of any tension. That's kind of like, if you have this kind of thing, you could get rid of that. So facial expressions should be bold, italics or underline. That's what your face is supposed to do with your, um, you know, with your message, compliments, supplements. Uh, here's a little trick for you. You know, we get into this whole thing with a lot of texting or, or emailing and stuff, and there's not a lot of personal communications. And we don't always, I mean, I'm a texter, I like to text, but uh, what I do with my clients sometimes is in between their sessions, I'll just leave an audio note. I'll go to my note thing in my phone, and I'll just go, hey, Sam, I got your, your homework. It was awesome. I really liked how you used air for speech and breath groups. Um, I think we need to work a little on intonation. It was a bit flat. I'll see you on your next session. Hope you're going great. And then I just pop it into his email or into his folder and he um, can listen to it at his leisure. I'm going to try to talk about slowing down as I'm trying to speed up, um, but it's not the way you think. People always say to me when they meet me, oh, I just have to slow down. I really have to slow down. And what slowing down looks like is a little bit more of this. So people try to like, they take the metronome, like I am going to slow down my words. But the best way to slow down is everything I'm teaching you is the best way to fix all of the problems that we have. Drawing a blank, going too fast, using filler words. How do you get rid of filler words? You replace them with pauses. So the easiest thing is as complex as this might sound, if you just do all of these things that I taught you today, we can fix all of the things that we talked about in the beginning of um, not, not um, knowing what you're going to say or how it's going to come out or, you know, having a really, um, having it come out as well as it did in your, in your head. When you practice it, by the way, you can't really just practice things in your head. <laughs> no, and I think you might know that, that you've done it in your head a million times and it just doesn't come out right. You have to practice it out loud. Another note I just want to make is I've seen this a lot, is that when especially for women, um, they were saying women have to be assertive, women have to be assertive. And then all of a sudden there was this big thing and like Fast Company and all these um, media stuff was, oh my God, women stop being... <laughs> assertive because you're coming across as aggressive. And I have news for you. If you're trying to be assertive and you're coming across as aggressive, you're doing it wrong. Okay. I just want to address that. Don't be afraid of coming across as assertive. You're not going to come off as aggressive as long as you're in your relaxed place. So you're using air for speech, you're using your breath grips and you're using intonation. It's that simple. I'm not picking on Nikki Parr at all. Okay, I just want to use her kind of a mouthful of a title. <laughs> it's a mouthful, okay? But I'm going to use this to explain Upspeak. 
Right. What is Upspeak? Does everyone know Upspeak? It's like, I'm Ida Olson. I'm going to teach you how to communicate. Oh my God. People do this all the time. We all do this. I was a huge culprit before I started my business in 1996, a long time ago. So the, how do we fix up speak? Do you think it's going to be complicated? Let me tell you something. It's not. You do the opposite. You do down speak. So at the very end of each breath group, you go down. So I'm Nikki Parr, Associate Director of Strategic Initiatives at Women's Economic Ventures. Goes down. So what happens to the brain? It's so cool because the brain is trained to know that when you go down, you can go back and just organize that. And I've got a thought now. So I know that this is a Nikki Parr because it went down and then I go, okay, that's the end. That's the end of that unit of meaning. It's really important. But when I say I'm Ida Olson, your brain says to you, you have to decide yes or no. Because Ida Olson just asked you a yes or no question. Is she really Ida Olson? I am. I am. It's true. I am. So this is what I want you to do also for homework. I don't have it on your five-day challenge. I apologize. But um, say who you are. Write down your title. Put in your breath groups. Glue them all together. Like director becomes bigger. Okay? And then you're a superstar. Superstar. I want to talk about small talk really, really fast. I do whole classes on small talk. Small talk is so important, but I just want to address it here for you because um, people avoid it and they say, I hate small talk. I hate small talk. But the thing is, I'm going to say, you're doing it wrong, but it's really small talk people don't understand. They think it means, um, oh, it's so sunny outside or, you know, talk about the weather and uh, where are you from? What do you do? This Asking people questions is the wrong way to go about small talk. The right way to go about small talk is to tell a little story. Tell a little human interest story that people can relate to. Um, when I was in, what time is that? Oh my gosh, 10, 12. I was like in fourth grade and Bonnie, she was very unpopular, very much like me. I was very unpopular in fourth grade and she came into class and she had a cast on her arm and she, all of the kids magnetized by Bonnie. What happened? And Bonnie was starting to tell what happened and everybody was like, oh my God, I broke my arm once or I broke my leg or I fell down or I went to the hospital. All their stories came out and Bonnie was popular for a little while. I still wasn't. Um, <laughs> But uh, it, came, it occurred to me much later that um, if you just tell a little story that makes people speak, you are going to build a relationship with people. You're going to initiate and maintain. These things happen like in before meetings get started. You're going oh, to make small talk. What do I say? I don't know. <laughs> so think about that as your anecdotes because you know how important storytelling is. I mean, you know it, it's everywhere. You want to incorporate stories. I can help you do this, but um, think about what your stories are. Record yourself saying them and analyze them. Beat yourself up and then write it down better and practice it using these easy, easy techniques that just require um, some practice, really. Let's, let's do a five-day challenge okay shall we because at the end of the five days and you've done these really simple things you're going to be smooth as silk you're not going to forget the things that you have to say and you're not going to have to memorize a script okay you want to be able to make these things things that you say and soon though um you know you can start to make stories up uh, off the cuff you can start to talk off the cuff but it's just because you're gonna be so comfortable and relaxed with people, okay? So today is the first day of the rest of your life. I'm really glad that you came here. I'm really glad that you had the hope and the faith that there's something about this communication skills. What is it? It's not been my life at all. Let's do this. Okay, <laughs> I made it kind of easy. You can add a little more if you like. Find your relaxed place three times a day, okay? I want you to use abdominal breathing for increasing increments of time. What does that mean? If you can do it for two minutes, five times a day, then do uh, five minutes, 10 times a day, and et cetera, et cetera, you get it. Um, record and improve one core message per day. If you do this for five days, I bet you, you will do it for 10, okay? But if you miss a day, don't beat yourself up. 
All right. This is kind of hard stuff. There's a lot. I gave you a lot today. It's easy, but it's a lot. I'd like for you, you know, the whole thing, like, what'd you do this weekend? You're like, Dung. Oh, I can't remember. Sunday night, create an anecdote about your weekend. Just, just, it's like 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And if you need help, reach out to me. There's my email address, write it down. And, um, I'm available for Q&A if anyone's still listening. <laughs> Eta, that was so great. My mind is absolutely spinning and I'm sure everybody else's is too. Um, wow, you covered so much ground. I'm so grateful to you. And I'm going to, did I notice that I upspoke on that last sentence? Oh, I've got but a lot no, of see, ahead of wait. me. But that's what I don't want you to do. You see, you just were mad at yourself and that's something that you want to release. Just gonna have to go slow. Okay, take a breath. I'm gonna go back through the Q and A because I know that there are some questions that came up earlier. So, um, question from Sabine, um, and Sabine is French originally. Um, when you're from a different country, how do you solve the not smooth speech? And Sabine, I'm gonna unmute you so that you, if you want to clarify. We can oh, I, oh sorry you don't I don't I don't mean to call on you if you don't want to be called upon <laughs> I just wanted you to have the opportunity to hit if you needed to elaborate your question <laughs> trial by fire <laughs> um yeah some I don't listen to myself talk now I'm super self-conscious obviously but um when I'm trying to explain something to people then my speech is is weird like when i listen to myself again i i just it, it's not it's not the way it sounds in my head yes yes how, how is it different from the way it sounded in your head it's very smooth and it flows in my head but, <laughs> um yeah when i hear myself I, I i did a couple of um of videos and I just, I just hate them because they, I, I, I don't know, it, the flow of the words is wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I could beat you up a little bit right here, if that's okay, just a tiny bit, I, I won't. Yes, okay. go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what you're actually doing is you're using an even Steven intonation pattern on your words. So where you are kind of gluing them together, um, you're still making each word about the same length and volume. And mm -hmm. so what you really want to focus on is using a bit more air if you would, and also um, using that intonation. So go back into your words, write them down, record them first, write them down, and then say which word's important and which words aren't right. and cross those out. And the other thing I want you to do is because you have um, a French accent, most accents use a front resonance. And what you're doing is you're using a lot of face. So what I want you to do is sort of pretend you went to the dentist and just say, seriously, like, oh, I can't move my parents at all. <laughs> and then really let the air come out. Okay. You sound gorgeous, by the way, but you can sound better, right? That's, I, I thought the, um, your point about uh, emphasizes the important words was really, really good. I'm just going to think about that. Yeah. And not only put the emphasis on the important words, but take the emphasis away from the unimportant words. It's even more important. Make them shorter. Write them in the way I wrote. You'll have access to this. Um, and so go and look and say, oh my gosh, this, the word for, F-O-R, the preposition, for example, this is for. The word preposition is for, mm. right? The same with the word to, the infinitive to or the preposition to, we say to go, to buy, to have, to see. We don't say to go, to buy, to have. Mm -hmm. It's a complete um, pervasive misconception and really everyone thinks it's true. So you want to make sure that when you're talking, you're choosing the words that are really important. You're making them longer and louder and the other ones have to get shorter and quieter. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a little practice, but you can do it. Thank you. Thank you, Ita. Um, another question, is intonation the same as emotional tone? Mm. It includes emotional tone, I think but I have to know what the person means by emotional tone. 
um, like, you know, oh, I'm really excited here, or, uh, well, all right, guys, we're going to be really somber now. You know, maybe that's emotional tone. So I wouldn't say that they're the same, but I would say you would need to use uh, a varied intonation pattern regardless of what your emotional tone is. Um, question from Alison. How do we sound assertive instead of aggressive? When you have a small voice or don't have the volume needed to get your point across, people always think I'm yelling because they cannot hear me otherwise. Can I just share an example of this? One of my worst experiences as a parent was when I had to coach my sons. They were five years old and I was having to try and wrangle these five-year-olds for soccer. And it was herding cats and I screeched and it was completely non-effective so i totally relate how do you get your point across when you're it's attention i guess okay that is an amazing question and everybody has the same question it's insane i i wish i had made this clear actually earlier so you have a small voice or your voice is quiet and stuff and it's just because there's too much tension in your throat if it's a concept like you know when you're in a very loud environment or back in the old days when you could have been in a loud environment a restaurant and it's so crowded and clanking in the clong and you're trying to talk to someone you're like hey okay what are we gonna do later i don't know you're just kind of screaming the more the louder people try to get the more they get really quiet. So what we want to think about in this case is something called resonance. I mean, I didn't have time to go over everything. I couldn't bring up resonance, but resonance is a thing where if you think about your vocal mechanism and you have it really, really tight, you're looking at a resonance that's super, super tiny. If you open up your vocal mechanism, you're looking at a resonance that's really thick and full. Everybody is capable of doing this, almost everybody. Um, but what happens is say you're in that loud environment or you're screeching, you want your, the kids to hear you. Um, if you say, hey guys, oh my God, you can't hear anything. Nobody can hear you. But if you say, hey, go open up your throat and use a lot of air, that's how you increase your volume. So the problem is the, the voice is small because the throat is way too tight. So like I said, the, the solutions that I've provided you with today are nearly the answer for almost any problem that we have when it comes to communicating. Do you think I answered that question? Yes. That's okay. Perfect. Okay. Another one from Dean. Are there any specialized pieces of advice, for presentations on video, when the audience speaker connection is different from when you're in person? You know what? I don't know why I couldn't hear you. I have this thing on a hundred. I didn't put my headset in. I just didn't quite hear. It could be my sound quality. So I'm going to let Dean ask the question himself. Okay. Hi, Dean. Hi, um, I give a lot of presentations and one of the things that helps me stay relaxed and pull on my knowledge and all the things you were talking about that close up is the energy in the room and the, the feedback from the audience in terms of their body language and their just their physical engagement and the energy that's created. When I'm giving presentations in a video conference, um, either you know they've turned off the camera so I don't have visual cues or they're visual but the energy is gone that engagement is missing and I can feel myself kind of um, being challenged with that multitasking that you were talking about um, there's an extra element so I'm wondering whether you have any advice specific to engaging an audience um, when you're on video as opposed to being in person um, that's a really, really good question. I mean, that's kind of what I just did today, right? I just talked to nobody. I didn't know who was there, what was going on. I would have to say that you you want to reduce your reliance on if other people are reacting to you because we don't really know what is going on in people's heads. Um, so even when you're in that, I know it's working really, really well for you, but next time you're, do, well, I don't know if you're doing any more presentations in persons now, they're all um, webcam, but uh, you want to say to yourself, do I believe in my message? Like, is your message amazing? You want to, here's the answer. Sorry. Doop, doop, doop. <laughs> I was biding my time while I came up with the answer. <laughs> the truth is, you gotta love your audience. That's the answer. The answer is you love your audience. And I was loving you guys this whole time. I was saying, you know what? These guys need this information. I'm gonna give it to them. There might be someone who's writing stuff like, oh, Ida Olson, she's terrible. She doesn't know what she's talking about. 
And that can happen, right? That can happen. And I have to love my audience and say, if I really reach people today, some people today, some of small percentage of this audience, then yes, I'm so happy to help them. So if you can let go of your desire to, to um, have other people show you that they're really engaged, you know, and just get back into yourself and say, you feel faith that what you're doing is the right thing and the way that you're doing it is the right way. Um, you know, of course, we can tweak and we can get better. Next time we're going to be better. Next time we're going to be better. But right now it's love your audience and understand that you're a vessel for your wonderful knowledge. Everybody, you all have your wheelhouse and you all have something that you need to share with people and you're just a vessel for it in a way. Like we have these talents and these skills and they need to come out and we can't hide them back we want to let it out there let everybody see and if someone doesn't like it then you know it wasn't for them did that help yeah that's good advice thank you <laughs> thank you it's nice to meet you I love your background thank you <laughs> so we um just have a few more minutes left so i'm just going to take um one more question that's all right um we're just going to go to 10 30 today Ethan. so um, so Christina says, sort of in the same realm, I think maybe as um, Sabine was talking about, when learning a new language or finding the confidence, what about when you're learning a new language and finding the confidence to actually speak it around native speakers? Does that make sense or I can speak? Does it make Christina? sense? Yeah, My God, it's so normal. <laughs> it's so normal because you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to make a grammar mistake or say the wrong word, you know? I always get confused between a bad word in Spanish and the word scared. <laughs> if anyone speaks Spanish here, <laughs> I always say the bad word on accident. Um, I get that. And the question is, how do I, the answer is, part, part of the answer would be to make sure that you're in your relaxed place to make sure that you understand that um, you're the communicator of two languages and <laughs> there's something to be said for that. Um, I want you to just have real confidence in yourself that you can use it. Don't let your gifts slide by. You know, don't avoid communicative situations because um, you're scared of whatever it might be, you know, making a mistake, etc. That's my advice, but my, um, advice would be to really do your relaxation exercises like crazy. People have so much tension in their musculature, so much tension and they do not know it. And so when you do your, that helps you to locate the tension. You have to first find the tension and then you can eliminate it. And so I'm gonna ask you to please do that. And then also use a lot of air for speech. And you can also say things like, um, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. Is that you? That was your question? <laughs> oh no, okay. <laughs> popped on. You can say things like, I don't know if I'm saying this right. Or always do like the meta thing. Like under, talk about what's going on right now. Oh my gosh, I'm speaking in English and I get really nervous. So, and the person's going to be like, oh my God, you sound incredible. Stop it. That's perfect. Oh goodness. Um, I think we could spend hours and hours and hours here with you. We could. Um, we could. Do you have any last pearls of wisdom if you could distill it all and i think you actually kind of just did it but distill it all into one neat package and as a goodbye to us just don't don't think it's about you and i don't mean that in a mean way i'm not sure if this is the pearl but i should have been prepared with a pearl i should have been prepared i should have known <laughs> Don't think it's about you, think it's about them. It's the same thing I was telling Dean. Um, love your audience. Just be like, hey, we're here together and I wanna know what you think. Don't let go of yourself. You're strong, you're able, you're capable and you have to do what you have to do, but make sure the interactions with people are warm and fuzzy along with you being authoritative. And the difference between assertive and aggressive is that the aggressive is missing that important component among other things. So you can say, I'm gonna be assertive but I'm going to do it in a way that has a warm, open voice and full resonant. And um, I'm going to really connect with people the best, the best I can. Perfect. Um, your authenticity just shines through, as does your humor. And, and I think it's such a powerful expression of who you are. 
and um, I just want to say thank you deeply um, for coming on on behalf of Weave um, and speaking to our clients and to some hopefully some new people that are unfamiliar with Weave as well. Um, Eta can be found at www.conveyclearly.com. Um, she sends out amazing blogs and newsletters on a regular basis. She offers individual coaching. She has online classes. Um, and I just want to say thank you again, Eta. And it was wonderful. It is to my see you. pleasure. My um, pleasure. I love you guys all. Oh, I hope I get to see those messages. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be back in several, three, four weeks time. We're going to be um, doing a webinar on how to have online events, given that um, holiday markets may not be happening in the way we knew them before, but many of you um, need to be at those holiday events. So catch us soon. It's great to see you all. Um, thank you for being here.